Okay, so last time we ran Trimomatic and we trimmed our reads uh, in a folder called data process. You could call it anything you like, but calling it data process. Um, and uh, and we've now, you might recall some of these, we have our original FASTQ files for each of our six FASTQ files, three samples. And now we have trimmed, uh, trim.fastq and untrim.fastq. We're gonna wanna work with the trim.fastq files today for aligning to our reference genome. All right, but we're gonna need to do a couple of things first. Uh, the first one is that we're gonna go and get our reference genome, which is gonna be done with this code here. I'm copying this and I'm gonna post this code with the video so you can copy this as well. Uh, we're gonna CD into that data folder and we're going to use curl to download our reference genome from the NCBI repository. So we can in, uh, in genomes, but then after that, the paths get kind of crazy. So we don't want to have to reconstruct that. I found it uh, previously here and copied it into our curl command here. So we're getting a uh, genome with, uh, yeah, with this ID information. That's a, an E. coli genome that is relevant to our project here. So we're going to copy that and then use gunzip to unzip that FASTA file for use in downstream analyses. So let's run that. And yes, it. Uh, I did this earlier, so we'll do the cookbook or cooking show style here, and I'll say sure. Just do it again. Okay. So now, if we uh, if we look in data process for something that's named E. coli, E. coli, oh, because I'm in E. coli, sorry, <laughs> LS E. coli. Uh, now we have that file and we could look at it, just make sure. Yeah, so we have some sequence data, E. coli is B strain rel 606 complete genome. There we go. So that's our reference data. Uh, what we wanna know now is how do our reads align to this reference genome. We have you know, 1.5 million sequence reads. The genome uh, is 4.6 million base pairs long. Uh, so where do all of these reads go? That's gonna be our next question. All right. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna CD, let's see, CD back to data process. And then uh, we need to do a couple of things. So so we're gonna make a directory called result process. And then we're going to make three folders inside of that results process folder. Uh, one for SAM files, one for BAM files, and one for VCF files. Today we're only going to be working, or here right now, we're only going to be working with SAM files, but next time we're going to convert SAM to BAM and hopefully get to our final product, which are the VCF files, the variant calling files. Okay. So I've already run that uh, and I'm going to ls results process and you can see there's three folders in there, BAM, SAM, and VCF, which is what we're going to be working with. All right. So now on to BWA. The first thing we have to do is create an index of our reference. And for that, uh, we're gonna use the one of these BWA modules. So if we type BWA at the command line, it's gonna show us some information about the program. It says, uh, to use BWA, you need to first index the genome with BWA index. Uh, and then there are three alignment algorithms, MEM, BWASW and align SAMC and SAMP. Uh, so BWA MEM is the typical aligner, but like it says at the bottom there, we need to use the module index first. So we're going to point BWA index at our reference genome. Uh, and that's it. So let's go ahead and get that running. Doesn't take long for this one. Uh, this is a process that does not scale 
linearly. The larger your genome is, the more complex this index becomes, and the more difficult it is to compute. For the E. coli genome, about 4.6 million bases. Here we are, two seconds, under two seconds, to index that genome. Uh, but that can be time and space consuming if you're doing something uh, like indexing a very large genome or a whole bunch of genomes, which you might want to do, uh, that may become computationally challenging. All right, next up, we're going to use BWA to align with BWA MEM. So the point of this video is not to discuss the different alignment algorithms. BWA MEM is suitable for uh, most typical alignments, uh, but you might want to do some research if you have some atypical samples. If you're using paired and Illumina data, uh, most likely BWA MEM is what you want here. That starts off BWA MEM, and then uh, we're going to do the path to our reference. And then I'm going to put a backslash so I can go into the next line. Uh, and then we're going to put in the path to the input file, so data. And uh, I'm going to copy this so I get the SRR numbers right on this one. Okay, SRR25, right, the one at 863 underscore one. Um, and tr dot trim dot fast Q, and then the same thing, 863 underscore two dot trim dot fast Q, and then uh, another backslash. And now that's all we actually need to do to run BWA, but we're gonna output this, we're gonna redirect this output into results process, uh, and then SAM slash, and this is gonna run BWA. It's gonna take every read in the one point five million or so reads in the 863 file and it's going to align it to the reference. It's going to output that alignment information in the SAM file format here in the results folder. And BWA is fast, uh, but even so, this is not a trivial search, so it's going to take a minute here. There we go. In uh, just about a minute and a half, we have aligned all of our reads to the reference genome. Uh, and now we ha should have a SAM file written for this genome. Let's take a look with this command head and the path to that SAM file ought to do it. And there we go. That appears to be the correct format. Uh, each of these lines here contains uh, information about the alignment. Uh, there are notes about this on the workshop website about what order things appear in. Mostly we don't want to be handling SAM files directly, uh, but we can use SAM tools and uh, BCF tools to uh, to gather this information and uh, work on the rest of the variant calling workflow. Uh, but this is information about how every read in the data set, uh, if it matches to the reference genome where it matches and how good the match uh, is for that read in that place. Okay, here is a bit of code that I've uh, modified a little bit from the last video to run the trimomatic command inside of a loop for each of the files, but now I've added the data process relative path here. So we can run this from the DC workshop folder, but still access the data and data process, which is gonna be helpful for adding the BWA line with these references these references to each of the files uh, as well because we're going to want to output to the results all right so same idea uh, we're still going to refer to the SRR number with the dollar sign curly break brackets base and then uh, we can refer then to the input data underscore one dot trim dot fast Q and underscore ooh, underscore two dot trim dot fast Q and then uh, we'll output that still to results process, SAM, but this time we're subbing in the SRR number here uh, for the file name in the SAM files. So let's give that a run. Okay, here we go. We're trimming and aligning reads in our pipeline in an automated fashion now. Uh, my error here it was actually nothing to do with the Trimomatic and BWA code. It was actually just that I forgot to add a relative path up here in the iterator part where we set up our for loop. So uh, there were no files uh, matching asterisk underscore one dot fastq in the DC workshop folder. At least I hope there weren't. Um, 
So then, of course, none of these paths worked because the iterator wasn't set correctly. And uh, and so Trimomatic and BWA both didn't run. Uh, now it is running, and it looks like it just wrapped up. Um, it ran all of those. I also added threading in each of these threads equals four. So it should split up that work across four compute cores and finish a little bit faster. But let's just verify that results process uh, SAM now has three SAM files in it. There we go. Okay, let's call it. Uh, we've now seen aligning with BWA, uh, including indexing your reference genome, and added that into our automated uh, workflow here uh, with this for loop. All right, next time we're going to look at SAM tools and some of the downstream analysis to, uh, to identify variants in our samples.